Good evening, this is Dr. Doresti with the Cranial Release Technique. It's 6 o'clock, Tuesday evening, June 4th, 2019. And I must thank one of my practitioners in Pensacola, Florida, by the name of Donna Stone, for sending me this article. It's from theconversation.com, and I will link this article in the description below. And the article is all about this is what happens to the baby's body during the birth process. So I'd like to just read a little bit of this, and then we will tie it in with CRT and the importance of regular CRT in both the newborn baby, the child, and the expectant mom. So let's take it from the top. Pregnancy, labor, and delivery are incredibly physically demanding for women, but birth is no walk in the park for the baby either. A new paper reveals just how much a baby's head is pushed and distorted by the vaginal delivery. And again, we're assuming that the vaginal delivery is the normal, natural delivery. That's the one Mother Nature prefers. So there must be a reason why we have to become squeezed through mom's birth canal to to proceed into this thing called life to leave mom's baby during the birth process leaves mom bot leave mom's body during the birth process by recording mri scans before and during the labor researchers show the degree to which a baby's skull bones ride over each other allowing the whole skull to morph the baby's head becomes a sugarloaf shape, an, elongo, uh, uh, <laughs> an elongated cone with a rounded tip at one end to get through the pelvis. The brain itself changes form as this happens too. <clears throat> Remember one of the first things they taught us in chiropractic school, structure determines function. So as the cranium shifts, twists, contorts, in life or in the birth process, obviously the brain has to follow that stress pattern that the cranial bones are imparting on it. So down below here in the, in the caption, they talk about the three-dimensional fetal brain MRI reconstruction shows the shape of the baby's brain before labor, which are the purple slides A, C, and E. So that's the brain before labor. During the second stage of labor is the orange, the B, the D, and the F. You can see how the brain, well, the skull and the brain are both changing during the birth process. And remember, the tremendous pressures involved in the head and in the baby's body as the uterus, the muscle mom in mom's pelvis is pushing us out, expelling us into the world. So let's just go down a little bit more. Head compression is just one of the many incredible physical changes that take place in the infants during the birth. Babies undergo a massive transition during labor and delivery as they move from a, the supported environment of the uterus to independent existence. And they talk about the changes that have to take place for us to survive. Changes in oxygen. Talk about the placenta. Then the researchers talk about how it doesn't always go to plan. And they talk more about how things have to shift once you leave mom's body and you're breathing on your own and what needs to change. Then we go down and they talk about the C-section. And of course, cranial release to C-section is a very interesting medical procedure, many times necessary, but the child is now denied passing through the birth canal. And that compression of the cranium and then the decompression, we're going to speak about a little bit later, Dr. Sutherland's primary respiratory mechanism really gets its kickstart from 
the birth process. From the passing of the baby's head through the birth canal, having the compression of the cranial bones, then leaving the birth canal, and then expanding out and kick-starting the mechanism, which is normal and natural for life. So if we go down just a little bit more, they talk about something called the squashed head. <clears throat> but why do we have such a high-risk delivery system? One where the baby has to actually deform its skull to be born. Again, the scientists are probably not aware of Dr. Sutherland's primary respiratory mechanism. To me, that only re that, that reason why the cranium is passing through the birth canal, that compression, decompression, that kickstart of the mechanism, again, that Dr. Sutherland discovered over 100 years ago. Humans are defined by our brains. In our species, the process of evolution has been a balancing act, where brain size and maturity have been weighed up in terms of survival, against the risk of obstruction and labor. Human babies are relatively immature compared with some of our close primate relatives, but we cannot safely achieve more, grain boat, more, grain, <laughs> more brain growth before delivery. For us, this extra growth has to occur over the first year or so after birth. And then the final point I want to make, in addition, because we walk upright, this has created a tilt in our pelvis, which narrows the birth canal, which is the gap between the bones of the pelvis, through which the baby has to pass. So they talk about all this thing, and, and I just wanted to bring up the, the CRT choice poster that we discussed the other day. Because in my experience, every time I've ever evaluated a pregnant lady, I have never seen a woman come in as the middle diagram. They've always come in as figure number one or as figure number three. And as we discussed in a previous video, that pelvic distortion caused by a brain hemispheric imbalance so here, left brain overactive creates more tension in the right musculature. Chances are there's a high right shoulder, a high right pelvis, and what will appear to be a short right leg when you lay this patient on their back and evaluate them. Keep in mind that when this pelvis, when one side of the pelvis appears higher than the other, that birth canal will be reduced, making delivery more difficult. So ideally, I'd like to have a pregnant woman come to receive CRT on a regular basis to do our best to keep things balanced, balancing the brain, balancing the muscles, balancing the structure for the benefit of mom and baby, to make the, the labor and delivery easier on mom and baby. And again, in my experience, mom will come in either as figure number one or as figure number three. And after CRT, they're back in the middle. And again, what is going to cause this person to go back to number one or to go back to number three? The patient's inability to handle stress, whether it be physical stress, chemical stress, emotional stress, or electromagnetic frequency stress, EMF stress, cell phones, the Wi-Fi, computers, all the electrical stress that we're now under. So again, it makes perfect sense for mom to come in on a regular basis for regular CRT care through the whole pregnancy, ideally before the pregnancy, before conception. Ideally, her and dad would come in before conception so that when it's time for conception, they would both be creating a baby from this middle diagram when they're both in whole brain function, their bodies are healing, repairing, regenerating. That to me will give you the best quality sperm, the best quality environment in mom's body for the baby to grow. 
And of course, then after the baby is delivered, what would make perfect sense to me is to have the baby receive CRT right after delivery, the sooner the better. So we have some practitioners whose wives or friends gave birth and, you know, within a day or two, and certainly even sooner, within an hour or two after delivery, receiving the first CRT. What a wonderful benefit you've just given that child. And again, to wrap it all up, we'll go back again. I will link all this in the description, this article, for you to read at your leisure. Again, from the conversation, this is what happens to the baby's body during the birth process. And then again, for those of you that are interested in learning more about cranial release, you can visit the website, which is cranialrelease.com. You can search for a practitioner here. And then if you are a practitioner or you know someone that would like to learn more about how do you learn cranial release, you would click here on the CRT online training button, and that will take them to this page where they can learn more about CRT. How do you learn CRT? It's an eight module program. <clears throat> you can learn it online in the comfort of your home or office. Again, this is Dr. Duresti with the Cranial Release Technique. Thank you for these few minutes. Thank you again to Donna Stone from Pensacola, Florida. Thank you, Donna. And I wish you all a good evening. Thanks so much. Goodbye.